Hello, hello. hello. Welcome. <laughs> right on. My name is Malcolm Saunders. I have two very special guests with me here today. We've got Lucas Simmons all the way down over here and then Asako Parima. Hi. Yay. So we've uh, come together to share with you um, some traditional wisdom that Asako holds around the Japanese macrobiotic uh, diet. Mm -hmm. And specifically, Luca was doing a class. Last weekend. Last weekend. Yeah. Yeah. On, uh, we were doing cooking for immunity. And one of the topics we were covering was how to protect or how to nourish the body in order to build up the resiliency and to build up the how your immune system is your protective detail and how to nourish it deeply. And I had spent an afternoon at Asako's maybe two years ago, maybe mm -hmm. now. Um, we're connected through our school community and Asako shared with me how to make a miso broth or a dashi broth rather and then turn it into a miso soup. And it was so delicious and it seemed to be fairly effortless. It was more a question of, you have to think about it in terms of time. It is a slow cook thing. Mm -hmm. But the benefits that come from it and the, the, the way to nourish the gut, to look after your microbiome, the bugs at the gut level, and how deeply nourishing this type of meal is to your immune system is one of the reasons why I included it in my class last weekend. And when we were talking about it, yeah. then people were like, what? Oh. What is this? How do you make it? It's very, awesome. very akin to a bone broth, a meat stock, and this is kind of the plant-based alternative, which, which definitely piqued a lot of interest. So yeah. in this video, we want to show you exactly how to make it, start to finish the traditional way. Uh, we've been chatting here for, for at least half hour, 45 minutes, kind of you know picking Asako's brain here, uh, mm -hmm. full, full of incredible wisdom and, and a beautiful approach to food. So that's what you're going to enjoy this morning. Yeah. So let's talk, Asako, let's talk about okay. some of the ingredients mm -hmm. that go into a dashi. I know there's a few different ways to make dashi. Yes. How do you decide which way you're going to make and what are some of those different ways you can prepare a dashi? Okay, um, so I prepared this. This much is a six cup of broth. Last night I soaked. So um, so six in six cup, it's about, okay, I don't measure by like centimeter or inches. I use my eyes and my hand awesome. and then like this much and half of my hand all right so a length of Asako's hand <laughs> and half of the width of her hand yes <laughs> it's I don't know which cent 20 centimeter and 10 maybe yep. and what it's, you're looking at here mm -hmm. is it's that um, so this is from I, I I have from Japan that it's very thick and it's um this is for dashi from in Japan. We don't really cook anything else. We just use this for dashi. And then, um, so when I compare with the one from Malcolm's store, it's, it's a little darker and then a little thinner. This is thicker, but I think this will work if you put maybe double amount. Okay. I think. And that's mm -hmm. the kombu kelp, kelp versus the kelp fronds. So mm -hmm. here is... <laughs> Nips. Sorry guys, last week. So when we were making the soup last week in mm -hmm. class, we used the bull kelp fronds. Mm. Now, Malcolm, can you tell us the difference between kombu kelp and the fronds? Yeah, so it's actually from the same plant, from the kelp, a uh, different part of it. So okay. down, down below would be like the, the base where it's very thick. Uh, and then up top is, is the fronds, essentially. Which, so so it's thinner. still gonna have all the same mineral content, yeah. but well, I think what we're noticing here with, with the base, which is much thicker, uh, and mm -hmm. as Asaka will tell us on how this is specially uh, prepared, um, there is a bit of a difference in the nutrient content. So yeah. we want that base that's thick because when you're, we're going to soak it here, it's creating almost like a slime, a jelly. Yes. So when I, when I pick this um, soaked kombu up with the hat, then it's the slimy jelly thing comes out. That's the thing that protects your gut and heal your gut. However, I think if this um, maybe double amount you soak it, um, and then uh, the color of the dashi gets really dark, and then I believe it comes out from this too. So uh, in Japan, we use this type of thick one to um, make the most of the gelatin thing come out from the kombu. Yeah, and, and we yeah. learned something really important this morning too, because it's like, okay, let's, let's try this. I'm just gonna boil up some water, get a pot going. 
And you were like, oh, no, no, do not boil it right away. There's, there's a key process here that you yeah. said that it, it must be soaked first. Yeah. yeah, so this is overnight soaked over six hours. And if I, let's say, if I start cooking this dried, dried kombu right away in the boiling water, the gelatin doesn't come out. It's interestingly. And then if you start boiling, then it's kind of bitter taste come out. Also the very oceany, not so um, a fun taste. Even Japanese don't like come out. So we pull this out, we don't boil it. And then we want to slowly, slowly cook it in a low heat to maybe high heat later. So we don't boil it in a boiling pot. Yeah. So this is, this is the thing. This is why we're getting that uh, that traditional knowledge, that traditional mm -hmm. wisdom, mm -hmm. right? Someone yeah. might look at the science behind kelp and go, "Okay, great. You know, I'm just like what I was about to do. Okay, let's just throw it into some boiling water, and that's, that's how we're going to prepare mm -hmm. it." But ancient cultures, you yeah. know, through centuries of developing their knowledge, their wisdom, their techniques, yeah. they really know they've got it down, and for very specific reasons. Yeah, and then we um, we communicate to the food, not just to think about the. The in, like what's nutrient in it and then we we sense it and we look at it and we look at the the season and where it cultivated and when and uh, where it lived and communication with the food is um, more essential to traditional cooking and then at least into the healing I think because you're communicate to the food that means communicate to with you with a connection with the food so um, that makes all the sense in the world yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Let's talk to our food. Let's let's get to know where our food comes from. Yeah. You were you were talking about the kombu. Mm -hmm. So this is the kombu base of the plant. Yes. And it's a type of seaweed that mm -hmm. grows in the ocean. Yep. In Japan, mm -hmm. it's it's grown in shallow, it's grown in deep. You might use those in yep. different recipes. Yes. Different seasons produce different mm -hmm. flavors yes. of the kombu. Yeah. So there's a real tie to the seasons and how things grow. Yeah and a mindfulness to that of mm -hmm. bringing it into how you cook and how different your meals are. And then season. when you use the, the ingredient right, it tastes really good. Uh -huh. That's how you know you hit it on <laughs> Yes, exactly. Now how do you, can you show us how you might make mm -hmm. uh, dashi broth? Okay, so uh, I made with a shiitake mushroom, three of them, and then uh, this much of um, kombu, and overnight. And then when you want to make um, miso soup from it, you just pour into the, the, the pot and then you take out the kombu and then put aside in a bowl or something. You could uh, boil this shiitake mushroom with the, with the ingredient of miso soup. I don't, um, it depends what you want to put in the miso soup. If you want to put the root vegetables, you, you have to cook for a while, then that's when you put the root vegetable, like a radish or, or um, uh, Rutabaga. Yeah, any, anything, yeah. that root vegetable that has to cook. And then you can cook with the shiitake mushroom, but as you cook the shiitake mushroom, it's flavor, more flavor comes out. So some people won't like it, some people like it. It depends how you like it. Yeah. You can take yep. it out or you can just cook with it and then take it out later and cut it, put it back. Because uh, shiitake mushroom is quite chewy uh, when it's dried. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we also learned this morning that you specifically soak the shiitakes first as well. So it's not a mm -hmm. just throw them into the pot dried, yeah. rehydrate yeah. them with the kombu. So same idea that uh, dry shiitake mushrooms doesn't like to be heated so quick, like the slow process of yeah. slow cooking wins again. Yes. Oh, yeah. it's like our ancestors knew and we should really listen yeah. to them. Yeah. They like cold water than warm water. So if you want to have a more flavorful broth, then you might want to put in a cold water first, and then that's you want to use it. Mm -hmm. Now tell us when you may not wish to use a shiitake mushroom, and you'd rather make a dashi broth with just kombu. Good question. Okay. Um, so I'm from a karatek cooking and uh, background, and when only when we use kombu is uh, we recommend to. Um, suggest to cancer, cancer patient who has more yin type of uh, disease. Like if your body is really yin, like cold type of disease, then you want to have yang to balance out. So you don't want to use the, the shiitake mushroom, you just use kombu broth. And then um, you, you, uh, we can use the more 
like darker miso, not the whiter miso, to combine to make it more healing. And then if you're really in, if you eat that, your body really likes it and you, you're, you're gonna be like, wow, this is so tasty. But when you wanna put, like, I, we can sometimes use just shiitake mushroom. That's when your kids who are um, naturally yam, and this is, shiitake mushroom is very yin. So when it, we boil down to half of the broth and then the, you can give them when they have fever to cool down. Right. With shiitake? So with shiitake, just shiitake, not kombu. And wow. So that's how you can balance. If you're more middle or you can feeding to your family, then this kombu and shiitake would be probably better, good choice for taste. Oh, yeah. and for your body. Cool. And another really interesting that we, thing that we learned here as well, and I've known this about shiitake mushrooms, I didn't know a lot about kelp. So when mushrooms are drying, and maybe you guys have heard this too, if you dry them upside down, kind of uh, gills to the air, or pores, doesn't matter the type of mushroom, dried, sun-dried, it actually uh, concentrates vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned that was exactly the same reason yep. with the kelp as well. Being yep. sun-dried concentrates that vitamin D. Yep. For those of us in these northern climates during the winter, mm -hmm. perfect. And also we use that, uh, I just brought this for example, for Bonito. This is like, you can get it in a um, agent store as flake form, but this is the, the real form of Bonito. It's uh, fermented over six months with the culture. And, and it's and a fish. And a fish. And Bonito it, fish, look at this. It's that you can almost nail the, the nail, like hammer the nail. It's really it's hard. hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's wow. really hard. It's like a rock. So I remember watching a cooking show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Japanese culture, mm -hmm. cuisine, everything, mm -hmm. and it was showcasing these three ingredients exactly. Yeah. The chiyotake, the kombu, and the bonito yeah. for producing the ultimate umami flavor. Yeah. Right? Yes. yes. So we combine the umami, <laughs> umami, umami, and and oh mommy. Yes. Yeah. Oh mommy. Yes. Oh mommy. That fifth flavor, that thing that we all like love, just like that deep savoriness. Yeah. Yes. Uh, these things th things make it. So Yeah, interestingly, all of them has vitamin D. Like because and it's sun dried. D. Wow. Because they're sun dried. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Right? And vitamin D for those who need to keep track at home, vitamin D three is one of those nutrients you need for your immune system to work well. And in people who present with autoimmune diseases, we f tend to find that they're a little bit deficient in D3. Mm -hmm. So these types of foods could be really lovely, nourishing deeply yeah. Yeah. and providing some of those nutrients to help you get through any type of illness. And then combine with uh, miso and mm -hmm. fermented soy or chickpea. It'd be yeah. perfect yeah. for your and it, isn't it funny you like we talk about like you know nature's wisdom traditional wisdom it, it's the kind of thing that in these dark cold winter months is the kind of thing that we want to create we mm -hmm. want to crave that deeply nourishing like that umami provides mm -hmm. you know a yeah. hot summer day you're not necessarily reaching for umami yeah. you know but you are in february mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's right oh, you are <laughs> <laughs> so the bonito fish it's mm -hmm. really just a fish that yeah. has a, a paste that's slathered on mm -hmm. and then it's air dried and there's in the sun, sun and out yeah. of the sun and yeah. it's back and forth yeah. for a good six months. And you were saying, mm -hmm. there's what, there's three I small think companies? only a couple yeah. family owned company unfortunately in Japan left and then this right. is from one of them. Wow. And you would take that and you would flip it that, into uh, the broth. I have the, uh, I'm not good at it, but I can do it. You've got to find the yeah. fine grater. Yes, they, yeah. that's an art too, I can't really do, so it I didn't practice. bring it. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. yeah. In right. which scenario would you add bonito? Mm -hmm. To, uh, to a broth. So uh, this bonito and kombu uh, combined broth is more po started to be more popular about 400 years ago okay. in Japan. And mm -hmm. that's, I think that's most like flavorful and stronger flavor. So people, it's most, most popular. But these uh, shiitake and um, kombu is more for uh, called shojin ryori. It's a Buddhist, um, Buddhist monks um, cuisine that's started like this in probably 2,000 years ago in Japan. Oh, wow. That's what I yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, And the Buddhist monks, right, obviously yeah. most of that culture is vegetarian. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah. in order to get the nutrients that yeah. a lot of meats would provide, mm -hmm. the, the bone broth, the meat stocks, those gut healing ingredients, yeah. they that's obviously the had to find alternative. alternatives. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, 
So we're really grateful for you being here, sharing sharing this wisdom with us all, and yeah. thanks everyone for tuning in. We're about to get right into the recipe now, so we've just kind of been setting the setting the tone, talking about all these interesting mm -hmm. different ingredients. Yeah. Um, so let's let's walk us through. So we've started off mm -hmm. with kind of your piece of kombu kelp, mm -hmm. uh, soaked in water overnight mm -hmm. for six hours, about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So very key yeah. shiitake mushrooms soaked as well. So now we have this essentially. Uh, Broth ready yeah. to go. They're ready and, to go. And, and so where do we easy. go from here? Or that's it. That's yeah, the that's recipe. it. That's the recipe. And then oh you my can gosh. just. <laughs> it's right. so. Well, we have to heat it. We or can would heat you take it. it cold? Mm, I. Well, oh, you could. In, in summer, I you might. Yeah. You just maybe add some vegetable cooked separately and then add okay. that. Yeah. yeah. But essentially, we're going to strain that off, mm -hmm. put it in a pan, warm it, yep. and then we're going to add our other vegetables if we want if or want. we can just add in uh, yeah. the miso yeah if you want just uh, uh tofu and seaweed then you can just this broth and then add miso uh, heat and then add miso and then you can add tofu and seaweed later okay, yeah too so it's pretty would you easy. ever reuse the seaweed that's in there like could oh. you chop that up and use that in the soup? yeah yeah um um it's get really hard like really chewy so what i tough. do yeah is um mom's tip is that uh, mix in the like if you eat meat sauce, meat sauce, or if you eat, uh, if you may, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you, you can put it in, pulverize it in the food processor and then put in a, like veggie meat sauce or like a veggie burger. Right. Yeah, fantastic. And tons of minerals, yeah, which minerals. would just nourish you even on an even deeper level. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you really get energy from the ocean, which we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so Luca in her class last weekend showcased this recipe. You guys did this miso soup, and some of the comments, what, were, what, were, what did you get oh, back? Oh, great. So p as people were trying it, this is the most authentic miso soup I've ever tasted. This is the real deal because, you know, we were talking, and so many people have the packet where you right. open, true. add a cup of what it's like a cup of soup, right? Yeah, you just yeah. add the boiling water to it, and it, it lacks depth. It lacks, it lacks so much. It's not, it's not the real thing. And they were all saying how easy it is. You know, the, the, some of the people who were here taking the class were not super confident in the mm -hmm. kitchen. But at the end of this class, what they did, because I had pre-made the kombu mm -hmm. broth, much like you have today. Mm -hmm. yeah. All they had to do then was to bring it up on a slow boil. Just before it boiled, they pulled the kombu out. Yeah. They pulled the mushrooms out. They actually decided to mince them and add them back in. Okay. They took the stems off. And then I had them chop up Napa cabbage mm -hmm. and some green onions, mm -hmm. toss that in after it had been brought to an almost boil, and then that simmered for maybe two minutes. And then they took it off the heat and we added some miso paste. Yeah, so mi yeah. miso is, uh, depends on how your conditions are, or your taste. You usually feel, uh, taste the most like, oh, well, this is delicious. It's especially miso is when, it, according to your condition. So. Okay. Um, like if you're really cold, you tend to be cold, or you're vegan or vegetarian, if you are eating a lot of vegetables, not a lot of meat, you probably feel the most delicious in the darker miso. Dark to bring, miso. Yeah. bring your like um, heat energy. Now, mm -hmm. is that uh, that darkness? Mm -hmm. So these are literally all the same ingredients, mm -hmm. and it's just the the age. Yeah. Is it? The um, yes, of time? but aka miso in Japan usually we don't we use the. Uh, bean koji so it's not uh, the rice koji that oh, we okay. but this this used the uh, rice koji so I don't know how they process it but you look at the color and darker you go more like healing if you have any like um, health conditions right. yeah this uh, the shiro miso is really light color yeah. it's a uh, um, I use it use for um, like a vegan cheesecake um, vegan cheesecake, miso, yeah, vegan cheesecake. Uh, yes, uh, if you use a cashew, like the yeah. cheesecake, yeah. if you add some miso, this that's it's gonna gonna be the miso like the important. So ah. make the dark like a more deeper taste. Okay, so you guys probably missed this. We were talking about uh, just before we went on. Oh, there's actually two different meanings for miso. Yeah. Now there's the one that we all know, which is right in front of us, that, that delicious, mm -hmm. savory umami paste, typically made from uh, rice and soybeans. Though literally you can use any grain and any bean. And I've seen some really fun variations. We have yeah. a nice chickpea. chickpea. We also have yeah. a soy one, uh, which is a deep dark, like it's even darker and redder mm -hmm. uh, than that one. So that would 
provide some really deep healing yeah, in that yeah. regard. Mm -hmm. um, now, the other meaning for miso is? is important, or this is the feature. Or we use it very often in Japanese uh, conversation. If you, like, this is miso means, like, this is important. Ah. Oh, yes. Well, the miso soup, I dare say, was the miso of last weekend's class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's, a, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. that's it's funny, actually, it reminds me of uh, uh, Dr. Terry Willard, who's, who's been into this world, you know, from a Western perspective for, for decades, right? And he said back in kind of the 70s, the 80s, as kind of the whole health food movement, especially macrobiotics, was becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. He says back then, you could find uh, misos of, of various ages. Uh, you know, 10 years, 15 mm -hmm. years, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you'd be over at someone's house, you could almost get a sense of how important of a guest you were, how miso you were, mm -hmm. depending on <laughs> <laughs> what age of miso they brought out, right? It's like, oh, we're bringing out yeah, the yeah. 15 year for you. <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. kind of like the scotch, you know? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, is. yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, with the popularity of miso, there's not a lot of 10 or, I've never even seen that available. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got some that I've made that uh, are, are, are quite well aged now. Miso, as far as I, I, I'm aware, minimum six months, most of them are a one year ferment. Um, some I've seen three years, five years. That's about as high as, I, as, as I've seen it. I think anything older, it's kind yeah. of special reserve. It's, yeah, it's not it commercially Very. available on, on such a scale. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's too delicious. Even in Japan, it's small scale usually, so you, you can't really get it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I bet you there's some Mises out there you'd pay just as much as a scotch for, you know? Yeah. 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 Mm. I think I'd year. rather go to a miso tasting than a yeah, I'd rather miso than scotch tasting. Yeah. That's the new party. <laughs> so when you're talking about measurements, because mm -hmm. I'm sure some folks are going to be wondering, oh, well, how much do I put in? Okay. So if you're, if you're making enough miso soup for two, mm -hmm. this six cups will give you enough for probably four people. Maybe. Yeah. Four or six. Four or six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cup how, much, how much miso would you add to this amount? Oh, okay. I never measure, Good. but when... <laughs> I encourage you to do the same. Yeah. <laughs> and it, you, can just, uh, you can start adding maybe a, oh, this much is quite a bit. So mm, three tablespoons okay. start. Yeah. And then uh, as you like, oh, this is tasty. That's when you taste it. And then that's how much you put in. Oh, so keep tasting as you go along. Mm -hmm. And if it's not to your liking, yeah. you might need a little bit so, more. So yes, t uh, kids tend to like more like as not as much as miso because their body is naturally yen. But if you have uh, um, a, a, like a person who have a cold or some illness, then you that person tend to like more thicker miso soup. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And also, I had noticed when you were making the miso soup for me that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm lucky. I know. Uh, you had used a strainer similar to this, a sieve mm -hmm. that you put in the soup. Yeah. You put the miso paste in here yeah. and brushed yeah, it yeah, against yeah. the mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. really? How come? Or is that just how it's made? You don't do that? I do in my house now, <laughs> but only because you do it. But the way that I'd always done this was before you was take you a, just... You take a slob and you, oh, you put oh, it in. Oh, kind of whisk it oh in. okay. Yeah. But when you made it for oh, me at your okay. house that day, you said no, no there's get a it. special sieve. Yeah, usually we have yeah. a special... But that's, that works, yeah. right? Anything works. Yeah. Just uh, so that it doesn't get so... No clumps. Um, no clumps, or like there's a residue after you, do, did you notice the residue? You, you might want to yeah. just squish it in or just add it up, but we use that so that it doesn't, miso tend to clump up yeah. as, as long as you don't really boil, which we don't often, we don't do often, yeah. Yeah, and it's probiotically rich, of course, yeah. yeah. So it's better served, I would think, in terms of... Mm -hmm probiotics if you add your miso after taking it off the heat. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. 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 Awesome. Or you can use you make dressing with it, right? Mm. That's yeah. delicious too. Mm -hmm. It's really mm. delicious. My okay. kids love it. Yeah. Love it. Adding it to cheesecakes, that was that was a big kind of uh, oh, found yeah. that for later. <laughs> uh, usually I use uh, miso yeah. and uh, because that gives a fermented taste and then a, a lemon juice. Right. That's kind of sour and taste. It balances and then out. balances out the yin and yang. Uh, we're all going to go hang out at your house, Jessica, if that's okay. <laughs> cool. Well, we've had lots of people hanging out online. Any comments, any questions, just post them down below. I'm going to take a look and see what we have here. Okay. Uh, where can you find the best 
fresh or fried, I think she says dried, uh, shiitake mushroom, local grocery store, the dried ones from the Asian store. Hmm. That's a question for you. Yeah. Oh, for me. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> I, I bring this from, I, uh, this is from Japan, but Luca bought this from TNT. Yep. And uh, this is probably machine dried. This is sun dried. So the difference, the smells the same. What do you think? This one actually smells a little stronger. stronger. Maybe maybe because the cap is is tighter maybe. in. Maybe. Yeah. But I don't think if you naturally dry, this gonna close. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But the difference would be, like non-organic, organic vegetable type of difference, okay. or like they, there's probably no vitamin D in here because it's machine dried. There's vitamin D in here because it's sun dried. It's sun -dried. Okay. Um, so is there anywhere in Calgary where we'd be able to get this quality of dried uh, I've never seen it. Um, okay. You have to ask Mark. Yeah, so I've got a source on shiitakes mm -hmm. uh, that have been dried, so they're organically grown, they're, but I'm going to ask, how is it dried? Because mm -hmm. that I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So we're, we don't have any in stock right now, but it's something that we very often yeah. bring in. So. Usu yeah, usually uh, um, this type is uh, usually available in any Asian store. Yeah. Yeah, Korean, Korean grocery store or a TNT. Okay, yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. Now also in terms of kombu, mm -hmm. now here at the Light Cellar, mm -hmm. Malcolm, you guys have the kombu kelp. That's right. Do you know, can you tell us where it comes from? Yeah, so from Vancouver Island, uh, there's a small family-run business that locally wild harvest the, the kelp. And again, I'm gonna, I'm almost positive it is sun-dried, but I'm gonna double check with them just to confirm, because I never knew about that mm -hmm. transfer, that absorbance mm -hmm. of, of the vitamin D. Yeah. And it's good. It's a little bit thinner, than mm -hmm. we notice, than uh, what you have. Yeah. And uh, do you guys ever just eat it like this too? Is that never. A, never. Never. Am I like breaking tradition here? Um, that's okay. <laughs> you're starting yeah. a new one. I'm you're starting very, a new one. Yeah, yeah, you're very creative. Yeah, for sure though, the, the kelp fronds, uh, which are on the top mm -hmm. of the kelp, that you can just These eat like a snack. They're amazing. Yeah, they're um, like a chip. They're very I soft. They're very like light and crispy. There's a, there's a kelp chips in Japan Have you tried too? that? Yeah. So salty. Mm -hmm. Yummy! Oh, I like it. I love it. So right. I put this I love in my meat stock yeah. all the time. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. Yummy. Yummy. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share with us? Uh, did we miss anything? Did we miss anything? I don't think so. Yeah. Sounds good to me. So yeah. thank you so much for coming on, You're sharing your wisdom. Thank, thank you guys thank for you. Uh, tuning in. Thanks for Luca for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. We had fun. So uh, yeah, if this if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up. You can follow uh, Asako Parima. On, she's on Facebook. Are you on Instagram as well? You are. Uh, yeah, I am, but I'm not really. Um, not very active. Not active. Yeah, <laughs> but. And You're then, active. Well, she's active in life. Yeah, yeah. she's not active online. Yeah. She's got a life. I, I got well, life. Three kids. Yeah. And Luca, she's she's active on both online and in life. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, sorry, that's not. You can find her uh, good food and you. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yummy. Yeah, no one.